Welcome back everybody, my name is Nick930 and this is my review for Avalanche Studios' latest game, Just Cause 4. Just Cause 4 is an open world action adventure game that expands upon the insane creative sandbox gameplay of the past several entries. New and unique grapple upgrades, massive physics based weather systems, and overall improved gameplay controls and mechanics help make Just Cause 4 one of the most realized entries yet. But some uninspired mission structures and a slew of technical problems prevent it from reaching its full potential. But before we get into all that, let's first talk about the story. In Just Cause 4, players reprise the role of Rico Rodriguez, soon after the events of Just Cause 3. Rico, following a lead about his father's superweapon, heads to a fictional South American island called Solis, where a private militia called the Black Hand have begun testing phases for their weather controlling device called Project Yapa, causing massive blizzards, sandstorms, and tornadoes all over the region. After a failed attempt to stop Project Yapa, Rico is forced to build an army of rebels to fight back against the Black Hand, disrupting the various weather systems and defeating the leaders of the Black Hand once and for all. Overall, the tone of the story is a bit lighter than what was in Just Cause 3, though fans of Just Cause 2 will likely not be satisfied, as the game still takes on a slightly more mature approach to its storytelling. I personally thought the story was interesting enough, though it's not necessarily one of Just Cause's strengths. Just Cause is all about its explosive sandbox gameplay, and Just Cause 4 leans into that with a ton of great new additions to the game mechanics. One of the biggest changes to the gameplay is the additional customization options available for Rico's grapple launcher. Players can now create multiple loadouts to fit their preferred control scheme for various grapple options. Players can choose between either the standard retractable grapple, the thrusters, or the brand new balloon tethers. Each of these three options can be combined for some absolutely insane ideas, like flying a bus into a tornado for example. What's more, you can customize how these three grapple options behave. You can have devices automatically activate on impact, or you can manually adjust the intensity with a simple button press. These new controls feel intuitive, and with a little bit of practice, can be one of your most powerful weapons in your inventory. Speaking of which, the weapons in Just Cause 4 have also seen some tweaks. Players can now properly zoom in their weapons just like any other standard third person shooter game, making for much easier combat control. Weapons are pretty straightforward with assault rifles, submachine guns, shotguns, and sniper rifles all being readily available in pretty much every fight. Each weapon has an alternate fire option, like a grenade launcher or deploying a mounted turret from a machine gun, and the perfect combination of weapons will really boil down to your playstyle. I did find that you tend to run out of ammo very quickly in this game though, and unlike past entries, there's no access to Rico's standard unlimited ammo pistols anymore, which is an odd omission. My guess is that they ran out of buttons on the controller with all the new grapple control schemes, but it does seem to encourage more creative approaches at least. Next we have vehicles. Just Cause has always had crap controls for its many vehicles, and the goal for Just Cause 4 was to improve on this. But despite some better handling for the most part, the controls are still pretty garbage. The vehicles feel floaty, which can be a real problem when traveling at high speeds and going over any elevation. I often found my vehicle taking flight while driving down a highway, and you'll need to master controlling your vehicle in the air to avoid any unnecessary collision. It's better than past games, but it's still not great. Outside of handling, vehicles also now include a full radio station with various licensed tracks, new available camera options, and a larger variety overall. To access your favorite weapons and vehicles, you can call in supply drops, which function more like they did in Just Cause 2, with players able to freely choose the location of their drop. But new to Just Cause 4 are pilots, which can be set up like supply drop loadouts, and easily called upon with a short cooldown in between drops. These same pilots can also be used for fast travel options as well, and the amount of pilots you have access to will increase as you create more chaos in the world. Another major change to Just Cause 4 is the game's open world structure. Rather than just aimlessly traveling around the map and destroying large military bases and camps, players are now thrust into a massive conflict, with complete control over the position of the front line. Expanding the rebels' control requires the player to complete various quests and cause chaos, unlocking new squads that can then be used to conquer larger sections of land. The goal here is to give actual purpose to causing chaos, but I think this whole system is a bit too confusing for the player. The layout of the map is difficult to understand at first, and I don't feel it's represented clearly in their UI. There are tutorials that teach you how these things work, but they aren't very effective, as each step in the tutorial is done for you, requiring you to just press a button to move to the next step. Advancing the front line is key to unlocking new missions, so this feature should eventually become clear as you play more of the game. Next, we have to talk about the mission structure itself. This is where I have a real problem with Just Cause 4. While grappling around and blowing stuff up is entertaining, the actual objectives are often incredibly mundane and repetitive. 
pretty much every mission in the game requires you to attack enemy positions and then hack a terminal, which keeps you standing in place for an extended period, hoping the incoming reinforcements don't shoot you and interrupt the download. It's a tedious process that completely kills the flow of the gameplay. This download defense style gameplay is part of almost every mission, and it just comes off as lazy. But that's always really been a problem with the Just Cause games. The structured missions were never as much fun as the actual sandbox experience, and with the inclusion of new weather elements, Just Cause 4's sandbox is more fun than ever. Storm systems like the Twister are always available in each of the four primary regions and offer their own interesting challenge to overcome. Tornadoes, for example, feature extreme wind that will rip physics-based objects from the ground and send them flying through the air. It's an impressive looking feature that also can be a lot of fun to play with, especially when you begin combining your new grappling capabilities with it. The sandstorms, blizzard, and lightning aren't nearly as much fun though, but they do offer an interesting enough challenge to set them apart. The overall goal of the game is to advance your front line, shut down the weather systems around the island, and then shut down Project Iapa itself. It's a really fun gameplay experience overall, but the visual presentation does leave a lot to be desired. Just Cause 4, as I noted in my previous comparison video, seems like a noticeable downgrade in quality from the previous entry. Things like explosions, lighting, and water simulation all have taken a noticeable hit. And if you plan on playing this on console, it'll be difficult not to notice the low resolution textures and poor shadowing. There's several texture and lighting based glitches that I noticed within the first hour of gameplay, including some flickering lights in the introduction, and a problem with Rico's hair that makes his head transparent when there's a snow texture located behind him. Thankfully, one of the biggest problems with the previous game has been fixed, the performance. Just Cause 4 on both the PS4 Pro and the PC runs very well. On PS4, the game runs at a locked 30fps, with very rare instances of frame drops. And on the PC, with a 2080 Ti, the game runs buttery smooth with no stuttering or crashing. It's likely a lot of the downgrades to the overall presentation were done to help alleviate the poor performance players found with the previous game, which is understandable. I just wish they hadn't downgraded the water quality as much as they did. Overall, Just Cause 4 is a lot of fun to play. The game's new grappling customization, coupled with the improved gameplay controls and massive storms, creates one of the most enjoyable sandbox experiences in the series to date. However, the game's story and mission structure feel like they're being hastily tacked on, with uninspired design choices and lackluster performances, and the game's new frontline metagame is poorly explained. While the game's performance has been improved slightly from the previous game in the series, Just Cause 4's visuals aren't quite up to par, and console users likely won't be impressed. Still, if you favor gameplay over story or graphics, Just Cause 4 is definitely worth checking out. Thank you all for watching, and if you want to learn more about this franchise, check out my History of Just Cause video that covers the full history of the series. And if you'd like to see how this game compares visually to Just Cause 3, check out my direct comparison linked at the end. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe for more videos like this posted every week.